What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Thursday, March 14th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Standup. Here are today's top headlines. First up, exploding energy prices in California, our favorite state. Next up, Biden's full year 2025 budget hurts oil and gas industry by repealing longstanding tax provisions and the IPAA admonishes it. This is a big one, folks. You're going to have to uh, stick around for that one for sure. Next up, Shell considers slowing pace of carbon emission cuts as CEO refocuses on oil and gas. You can't make these headlines up, folks. And finally, many countries want to start rupee trade with India in, quote, game-changing de-dollar Dollarization step. We love a good little uh, stew headline there. He'll then toss it over to me. I'll quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas finance markets. We did see the EIA come out and confirm a pretty big draw from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And Kimridge goes out and makes a plea to uh, merge Silver Bow with its gas assets. So we'll cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley, the editor of EnergyNewsBeat.com. Go ahead and kick us off. Hey, let's get rolling around. Uh, Michael, this is uh, I got about six other stories that really flew along with it. Exploding uh, energy prices in California. Uh, this is really uh, Miss Producer. If you could fly in electricity price increases in all sectors from 2008 to 2023. Look at Texas. It went down. <laughs> look at california it's up almost 98 percent from 2008 to 2024 yep. here's where some numbers that aren't in this article that matter michael okay uh prices or uh market share of energy produced by wind and solar has gone up from 4% to 15% over the last uh, same amount of time period, okay? But guess where most of that went? It, it's in Texas and California, but Texas has actually been using coal, natural gas, yep. and nuclear. And so it's kind of interesting to see how that, all that happens in there. Um, the transition... Uh, 1.75 gigawatts of utility scale solar and 14 gigawatt on residential rooftop solar, yep. which is failing. <laughs> 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 so here's where it gets really sca uh, scary in the cost and the reason why. Grid scale batteries to back up renewable generators multiplies the cost of utility scale solar programs about $1 million per megawatt of rated grid capacity with four hours of discharge duration costs about $1.5 million per megawatt. These batteries can only last for four hours. Holy smokes. Okay. Here's the difference. Texas has natural gas for backup and for standby and that they're trying to put in no natural gas and batteries. That's where it's really coming in. Uh, so when you sit back and take a look, uh, conclusion, California leaders know that rising prices are a huge problem. Really? Do they think they actually know? I don't think they know. I got tickled when I read that one, Michael. Yeah, I, 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 th I think the big, <laughs> I mean, it's California doing California things. I mean, $1 million or $1.5 million per megawatt capacity for four hours. Oh, that's, that's cost effective. It's not. And, and, and so the, the average, uh, price per consumer that's per megawatt. So it's not, it's a little bit different, but still it is. that's horrible. The price per kilowatt hour um, went from three cents to average of 17 cents during that same time period in the U S what was the only difference in that whole time period? The addition of 15% yep. uh, uh, in the U S renewables. 
Oh, wow. So 98% increase and the average bill in California is horrific. Yeah, anyway, no, I, really. I love that story. All right. Uh, what's next? This one I, sucks. This one sucks. Um, Biden's full year 2025 budget hurts oil and gas industry by repealing longstanding tax provisions. The IPAA admonishes. Michael, this is a quote out of it. Um, repealing this provision and raising taxes on oil and gas tax pay, uh, payers is a reckless policy proposal. IPAA continues to fight to preserve the energy tax treatment, particularly IDCs and percentage depletion allowance and prevent new taxes that would hinder independence ability to operate and produce energy for the American people and our allies. Michael, this is despicable. Yep. Here's the thing. 50% of the oil generated out of the United States, the number one oil producer in the world is by independence. And if we take away the tax incentive, not only have you declared war on energy because they are declared war on renewables just as equally as they have as oil and yep. gas. It's the consumers that are going to pay through the nose. <laughs> but it's, it's, this is, and this is a, you know, this is a, and this is where I always get a little, there's a difference between subsidies and 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 tax write-offs. There's a difference. A subsidize is directly paying you to not do something. Right. When we subsidize, you know, you know, when Corn. we do ethanol, you know, even ethanol isn't necessarily a subsidy for the for the farming industry, but farmers will get paid not to grow certain crops. That's a subsidy. Tax write-offs is different because you actually have to go out and do the work. The work has been done, and once you've invested the capital, the IDCs and ICCs, them attempting to get rid of them is really a war because and that's it's it's really what people are talking about when they talk about subsidies. They're not talking about actual subsidies. They're talking oh. about the IDCs and the ICCs. Oh, absolutely, and the ICCs and the IFCs, which is the feces, which is in the driveway that you step on. So when here, that was funny, by the way. And, and so when you, you sit back, and kind of, you sit back and kind of go, wait a minute. Um, EVs have the same problem, a tax incentive uh, for buying an EV is only available on certain models and certain levels of income can afford them. A subsidy is you getting five thousand dollars directly to go purchase a EV. It's exactly. not once you purchase the EV, you can then write off five thousand on your taxes. There's your difference. That is correct. So I'm good for something. This yeah, and, today, you know, anyway. I, the IPP, the the IPAA, we stand with you. We hope yep. this doesn't go through. It won't. Trust us. I don't. We don't give investment advice, but I, I Michael. I quit saying, oh, it won't get passed. Not in this day and age. Dude. Shell, okay, let's go to the next one before I throw up. Uh, Shell considers slowing pace of carbon emission cuts as CEO refocuses on oil and gas. <laughs> Michael, you and I have had so much fun over the last three years seeing the flip-flop. Uh, this is an NBA move <laughs> that I cannot yep. get over. I mean, um, Harden, I remember getting uh, on when I was on floor seats at the Thunder game and Harden, oh, Harden would pow. He was fear the beard. He could was. Flop. He Those was, are old days back when he was on the Thunder. Oh, he was great. I love me some Harden. Now, listen to this. Uh, Shell initiated its plan to become net zero in 2020 under previous Ben Von uh, Burden. Key to its emission reduction pathway is net carbon intensity, a measure of emissions from the energy it sells to customers. In 2021, the company pledged to decrease that intensity by 20%. Well, now they're kind of going, hmm, 
Hmm. <laughs> listen to this quote by the current one. We listen, we look forward to publishing our energy transition strategy report on March 14th. The Shell spokesperson said publication will contain details of our plans to become net zero emissions by 2050. They added 20 years. <laughs> well, again, I love this quote. Shell initiated its plan to become a net zero company in 2020 under previous CEO. Ben for Ben at hoop previous. Ah, yes. mm. here's he, here's you know not to bring you behind the curtain, but it's clear this came from board of directors down. Why? Because they switched out CEOs because of this. Why? When did they start changing tune? When this new CEO came in, which means this was something that the board was concerned about from a board level. So, what is yep. second order of magnitude, as I like to say? For what's this mean? This means that they're not the only company thinking about this. No, BP and, was thinking about this. And, you know, why did the the CFO take over BP? Well, because now it's all about finances, and people aren't dumb when you look at a spreadsheet and say, "Where's my making my profit? Where am I making my losses?" So this is going to have a magnitude. Remember, Shell and Exxon, or Exxon and Chevron, have stayed within the oil and gas upstream. They've they've shied away from going as far as Shell and BP, and as everybody said, who was going to be the first one to blink? Chevron or Exxon or BP and Shell? Well, guess what? Both BP and Shell have blinked and are now coming back over to the upstream side. I, I, it's I'm not going to say they blink, Michael. They curled up in the fetal position and they wish flinched. this. Yeah, they they wish that Scooby would pull the mask off that uh, invader very quickly. Uh, in this article, Michael, it says shareholders rewarded BP with a more than 8% jump the same day when they announced the same thing. <laughs> you were spot on. All right, let's roll to the next one here, man. Okay. Many countries want to start rupee trade with Indian game-changing de-dollarization step. This is just part of the BRICS uh, type thing expanded out because around the world, Michael, there is a movement for countries to trade with their own currency. This is going to have every bit as big of an impact as BRICS. Because it's moving away nope. from the dollar. Listen to this. Uh, at some point, more developed countries and countries in the Far East will also join the bandwagon. Uh, the India's union minister, he said, adding that more and more uh, countries are realizing the advantages of trading in their own domestic currencies and a shift toward direct transactions between local currencies is gaining traction. The U.S. has shot itself and play and just pulled a Dick Cheney. I don't know how you have a Dick Cheney moment and shoot yourself in the foot. Say, don't shoot. Don't you boom. You know, don't go hunting with Dick Cheney. I guarantee you. But we went hunting with Dick Cheney and the U.S. dollar got shot. So. All right. That, anyway, I mean, they started with it. I thought it was pretty interesting. Hats off to the Indian leaders. I applaud them for doing it, and I'm. Uh, they've got to defend themselves against the U.S. Absolutely, we applaud what Prime Minister Modi is doing over there. Um, you know, he's looking but, out for the people. He, he he's, and, he's looking out for the for the Indian people, which is what you should do as a leader. I I, I love in the uh, Indian culture, and I I just every everybody I like, I like everybody yeah. now, mostly. The, this does not bode well for the United States, though, because the petrodollar has been one of the the best forms of defense that we had. When all else failed, we were the currency that oil was traded in. Not anymore. Not anymore. Nope. And and everybody was saying, oh, it would take years for the de-dollarization to occur because of the petrodollar. And I said, mm -mm. what did I say, Michael? I said it's going to happen sooner than people realize. All right. I'm done. Off to you now. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and dive into oil and gas uh, finance happenings. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. As always, thank you guys um, for checking us out at www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed with everything you need to know. 
to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business, go ahead and check out the description below and all of your podcast platforms. You can hit the uh, and see all of the timestamps, all the articles that we cover. And you can also take our new leader survey. Um, we highly recommend doing that, get you access to our new premium news services that we're going to be rolling out here in the next couple months. We just, we love hearing feedback from everybody. Um, and uh, as always, you can check out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com for our MVP data news product and maybe something that goes behind a premium uh, news paywall so get it free while you still can but let's go ahead and dive in here folks um oil prices actually today we're we're, we're you know rebounded a little bit we are up about three percentage points uh to what we would call quote unquote a four-month high we didn't quite crack eighty dollars but we got really close and this was mainly off the back of two things one geopolitically uh ukraine has been bombing drone bombing russian refineries i mean it's getting scary over there, guys. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but that on the back of the EIA coming out and confirming what the um, – or coming out and confirming a draw from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. API yesterday said about 5.4 million barrels. It was only a draw of about 1.5 million barrels, but still it was enough um, to drive things. We also s saw a big drop in gasoline stocks um, while distillates did go up a little bit, but that um, – that difference of about 3 million barrels on a week-to-week -week basis was actually in line with what everybody thought. The API both had higher prices. You know, the EIA had about 5.5, or excuse me, the, 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 the estimated draw from gasoline was about 5.7 million barrels. So, uh, pretty big gasoline draw there. Uh, mainly what rose to prices. We saw gas, um, based off the back of warmer weather, still drop about one uh, to one dollar and sixty six cents. I mean, this warm weather has just absolutely killed us, and it's specifically from natural gas pricing perspective. So, you know, we will uh, we will see how that goes. The other interesting thing I saw Stu was was Kimridge goes ahead and makes a a, a new uh, offer to buy and merge Kimrit or and merge uh, Silverbow with one of their subsidiaries. Um, they're calling it. Uh, Forget what it's called. I think it's called Kimridge Texas Gas, which is basically their South Texas assets. Um, they're going to go ahead and they want to make a two point one billion dollar offer, um, for which would be about thirty four dollars a share relative to what Silver Bow was trading at. That stock was actually up about three point three percentage points in early trading, so a little bit of a premium there. Um, you know, interesting time. I think obviously. With Silverbow being an Eagleford uh, and, and an Austin Chalk producer, the majority of that being natural gas, you know. The, the funny part is it's a, they've submitted an offer. They've gone public with this offer. So everything looks kosher, but trust me, if they wanted to really do this deal, it would have gotten done. Silverbow had to come out and announce, but we will carefully review and consider the proposal to determine the course of action it believes in the best interest of the company and all its shareholders. Uh huh. Don't deals just, just happen behind the scenes and they both announce that it's going to happen? Again, what does that tell you? Uh, Silverbow does not want to do this. And it could be a variety of reasons. They could not want to necessarily um, go private. Maybe they like the public markets. Maybe they don't want Kimridge, Texas gas, which is 85% natural gas, and they're not necessarily interested in taking on this. They would be get, they would get $500 million in the combined company, um, according to Kimridge, to help pay down the debt. Um, but from a from a high level standpoint, I can't imagine that this is something that's going to happen under these deal terms, or it would have already happened. That's the funny part. So this is the first step in what is Kimridge known for? activist stance so you know this is what they 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 were a longtime activist in colorado they were instrumental in getting civitas to come together whatever you think of that deal they've been pushing for consolidation so this isn't really a consolidation of the business more this is them just trying to add on their gas assets to silver bow possibly again my my assumption goes this deal is not going to happen under these terms or it already would have been accepted. I know that's a crazy take, but it would be interesting. Um, managing partner over there at Kimridge, uh, Ben Dell, he says that this combined company would trade between sixty and sixty five dollars a share. Probably not, probably not. But hey, you know, uh, someone you can dream, you you can you can you're always allowed to dream. Now. 
What will it end up being? Who knows? But uh, uh, unless there's too much carbon in that dream, and then you're going to have a carbon credit that tax on your dreams. Hopefully they're Bitcoin mining over there. Oh, snap. <laughs> all right. That's about all I've got, Stu. What's uh, what else you got for folks? Oh, hey, I uh, just released out uh, the uncovering Antarctica inconsistencies in climate information. Uh, Fritz Byrne, he was a absolute hoot. Uh, he found about 20 different sensors. So you have to ask the question that they were manipulating data. So are the sensors being censored or are the sensors being censored? I think the so, sensors are being censored. I think so. <laughs> That's funny. So, all right, guys, with that, we'll let you get out of here, get back to work. Have a great Thursday. You will see um, our weekly recap on Saturday. What do we got podcasts coming up from you, Stu? Oh, we've got a ton of them coming around the corner here. We have uh, Doomberg coming out next week with yes. uh, Chris Wright. Uh, and we have about four or five others uh, that are coming along as well, too. So we got amazing. Of them. Amazing. Well, we definitely look for that one. We're going to be promoting the Doomber Chris Wright one heavy. So get ready for that, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you um, tomorrow on the podcast. We'll see you weekly recap on Saturday. And then we'll be back in the chair Monday.